Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the area of a triangle using Heron's formula. And we have to use Heron's formula uh, to find the area of the triangle because you can see in all three of these examples we're only given the side lengths of the triangle. So for instance, you know, previously we learned how to, you know, find the area of, an ang of a triangle if we were given the base and the height. And if we weren't given the base, um, then we had to use some kind of uh, knowledge, or I'm sorry, if we weren't given the height or the altitude of the triangle, we had to some kind of use some uh, understanding to be able to find, you know, that height of the triangle. Um, but in this case, what we're basically looking at is, you know, a triangle, like for this first one, we have four, four, two. So um, we're kind of at a loss here as far as, uh, using this kind of thinking to be able to identify, um, you know, what is going to be our area of the triangle. Well, we can definitely just use this formula um, where the square root, the area is equal to the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, where s is equal to one half a plus b plus c, which would be probably a lot more taxing than trying to, you know, using your equilateral angles, to having then using some trig and then finding the area in the base and so forth probably going to make us uh, make work on us a little bit easier. So first thing we always want to do is identify our s, which in this case is going to be 1 half a plus b plus c. So s equals 1 half 4 plus 4 plus 2. So 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. So therefore s equals 5. Then we plug it into our formula, area equals s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. So therefore we have the square root of 5 times 5 minus a which is 4 times 5 minus b which is 4 times 5 minus c which is 2. So therefore I have 5 times 1 times 1 times 3 and 5 times 1 times 1 times 3 equals the square root of 15. Um, we can leave it as that. That's the way that I uh, appreciate it. Or we could also approximate square root of 15. We could approximate um, to the nearest, let's say, thousandth, 3.873. Okay, so in the next example, um, again, we're going to be doing the same thing. Let's identify our S. So that's going to be 1 half, 14 plus 12 plus 4. So 14 plus 12 is 26, plus 4 is going to be 30. Um, 30 times 1 half is 15, so S equals 15. And then let's kind of skip down a step because I don't need to, I'm not going to show as much work here. So therefore I have 15 times 15 minus A, which is 14, times 15 minus B, which is 12, times 15 minus C, which is 4. So therefore, area equals 15 times 1 times 3 times 11. Uh, I don't want to do that work in my head, nor do I think I probably could. So I'll do 15 times 1 times 3 times 11. And I get 495. So therefore, that's equal to the square root of 495, which again, I could approximate to the nearest thousandth and area would equal 22.49. I'm sorry, yes, 489. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and do our last example. Hope you see it's pretty straightforward. All we want to do is identify our S. So S equals 1 half times um, 11 plus 9 plus 7. 11 plus 9 is 20, plus 7 is 27. So S equals um, 27 times 1 half is 27 over 2. Um, you could approximate that, um, but, you know, we'll see. But it's really not going to matter. Actually, you're not going to simplify anything, so let's just do that. 27 divided by 2, 13.5. I should have known that. Okay, so now we have our area, which is equal to 1 half, 13.5, times 13.5 minus 11 times 13.5 minus 9 times 13.5 minus 7. So that's equal to 
Let's see, 13.5, um, that's going to be 2.5 times 2.5. That's going to be times uh, 4.5. And that's going to be times 6.5. Now I'm going to need to multiply each and every one of each and every one of these. So we do 13.5 times 2.5 times 4.5 times 6.5, and I get 987. 987.1875, which I, again I could approximate. So we'll hit the second square root of second answer, and I can approximate that. I should. Notice that. Approximate that to be 31.4. Uh, let's see, round it to the nearest thousandth here, brings that up to a zero. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you identify the area of an oblique triangle using Heron's formula. Thanks.